Today's topic in the viral course of anatomy is classification of the bone according to their shape. But before that, we will see the definition of the bone. The bone is a specialized living organ which is constantly changing, composed of two-thirds of a calcium salt and one-third of a connective tissue with numerous blood vessels. Now we will see its classification. The bone is mainly classified into four types. First classification is according to shape. Second classification is according to its development. Third classification is according to its region. And the fourth is according to its structure. Now we concentrate only on the classification of the bone according to its shape. It is classified into seven types. The first long bone, second short bone, third flat bone, fourth irregular bone, five pneumatic bone, six sesamoid bone, and the seventh accessory bone. We will see one by one. The first one is a long bone. The long bone is a bone whose length is more than the width. Okay. Now we will see first the part of a young long bone. The part of the young long bone, the first part in the young long bone is a diaphysis. The diaphysis is the central part in the young long bone which will form the shaft in the adult long bone and it will ossify from the primary center of a ossification. The second part in the young long bone is a two epiphysis that will also known as a tips or the two ends. It will form the two ends in the adult long bone and it will ossify from the secondary center of a ossification. The third part in the young long bone is a metaphysis. The metaphysis is a part of the diaphysis that is close to the epiphysis of a young long bone. Now the metaphysis is important in, uh, in such a way that it is most common part of a young long bone to be infected to form, produce osteomyelitis because in the metaphysis the blood vessel capillary will form the hairpin loop appearance and the emboli and the bacteria is commonly impacted in this hairpin loop appearance the blood vessel in the metaphysis. So it is a common sign of a osteomyelitis in the children. The, the last part in the young long bone is an epiphyseal plate of a cartilage that is present between the epiphysis and the diaphysis of a young long bone and it is responsible for the lengthwise growth of the bone. Now in the adult this plate will fuse uh, this will replace by the bone and fuses the epiphysis with the diaphysis to form the adult long bone. So now this part will form the adult long bone. The diaphysis will form the shaft in the adult long bone. The epiphysis will form the two end or the tips in the adult long bone. So in the adult long bone, the part will be one shaft that is composed of outer cortex inner medullary cavity and the two ends or the two tips. Now the long bone are again sub sub subdivided into three types. The first is a typical long bone, second miniature long bone, third mod modified long bone. The typical long bone are the bone which is having the shaft containing the cortex with the medullary cavity and having the two epiphyses that is called typical long bone. The examples are the humerus, radius, ulna, femur, tibula and the fibula. These are the typical long bone. The second subtype of the long bone is a miniature long bone that is having only single epiphysis that is developed from the secondary center of the ossification. Examples are metacarpal bone, metatarsal bone and the phalanges. The third uh, subtype is a modified long bone. The example of the modified long bone are the clavicle and the body of a vertebra. The main function of a modified long bone is to transmit the width that are called the modified long bone. Second type in the classification of the bone according to the shape is a short bone. 
The shirt bone are roughly cuboidal in the shape and having the six surface. The examples are the carpal and the tarsal bones of a hand and the foot. Now the third type is an irregular bone. The irregular bone are the bone whose shape is not different. The examples are the vertebra, vertebra, hip bone and the bones in the base of the skull. The fourth is the flat bone. The flat bones are the bone who consist of the two plate of a compact bone with the intervening spongy bone and the bone marrow. The flat bone, the uh, cardinal feature of the uh, flat bone is uh, that they will form the boundary of the body cavity like the bones of a thorax and the bones of the skulls. These are the ribs, the sternum, the scapula and the bone of a skull bone. The fifth type is a pneumatic bone. Pneumatic bones are the bone who will contain the air filled space which is lined by the mucous membrane, mainly seen in the bones of the skull, which are the frontal bone, the maxillary bone, the sphenoidal bone, and the ethmoidal bone. The main function of the pneumatic bone is it will make the skull lighter in the width, it will provide resonance for the voice, and it will provide air conditioning chamber for the inspire act. The sixth type is a sesamoid bone. The sesamoid bones are the bony nodules which are found embedded in the tendon of the muscle or the joint capsule. Now the sesamoid bones are having no periosteum cavity and they will ossify after the birth. The example of the sesamoid bones are patella, PC4, fobula and other bones like the bones in the head of the first metacarpal bone and the head of the first metatarsal bones. Now the main function of the sesamoid bones are to reduce the pressure, to minimize the friction, to alter the pull of the muscle and to maintain the local circulation. The last seven type is an accessory bone or a supernumerary bone. It is not always present and it will occur as an ununited epiphysis from the extra center of the ossification which will fuse, fail to fuse with the main bony mass. The example are the sutural bone, the os trigonum that is lateral tubercle of a trigus and the fifth tuberosity, tuberosity of the fifth metatarsal bone. If you like our video, like it, subscribe it and share with your friends.